Over the years of birding, I've had many interesting and beautiful experiences. I really need to write a book or books about them someday. I want to share one experience that I've been enjoying for the last six years with white-throated sparrows. So first, a little about them. White-throated sparrows breed in our beautiful boreal forests here in Canada, as well as some northern parts of the states. When fall comes, they leave my location and migrate to central and eastern United States for the winter. An interesting thing about these lovely little sparrows is that they come in two color morphs, tan and white morph, which behave differently from one another. For those who may want to learn more about this, here is a link to a video I made a year ago. Their song is one of the most memorable and prettiest songs. I can't count how many times people email me inquiring about a bird song they've been hearing and 9 out of 10 times when I send them a link to my video of White Throated Sparrow singing, they say yes, that's the one and thank me for helping them solve the mystery. White Throated Sparrows are very faithful to their wintering grounds and their breeding grounds. They have returned to the exact location. My experience with them has proved that to be extremely accurate. Now that I mentioned a little about these guys, on to my story. As a child, around seven years old, I'd play hide and seek with my neighborhood friends in our favorite field. One memory that sticks in my mind of those evenings is being stopped in my tracks by a beautiful bird song, but not being able to see who was singing it. That beautiful song had a profound impact on my child mind, but as to who it was remained a mystery to me until my late 20s. The first year I began birding, 2011, I heard that song again for the first time in over 20 years. It was like an echo from the past. Instantly brought me back to when I was 7 years old with my friends in that field. Just as captivated, only this time I could see who was creating this lovely song. A small bird with bright yellow lures above its eyes, a prominent white throat pouch, and black and white stripes on its head. Wow, I thought as I watched it sing. I couldn't help but to wonder what this bird was like, how it lived life, and more importantly, what name it was given. When I got home, I looked through all about birds to find out who the bird was, and learned it was a white-throated sparrow. Finally, after all of these years, the mystery was solved. Fast forward another year, spring of 2012, I now have many bird friends such as chickadees and jays. While out in the woods with them, I fed them seeds and peanuts. To my surprise, one pretty white morph sparrow flies down on the ground in front of me and just looks up at me as if to say, are you going to give me some of that too? Surprised, I'm a little stunned for a moment. I look at the peanut in my hand and decided to toss it down to him. Instantly, he grabs it and takes it off into the bushes. I remembered seeing a sparrow in the tree watching us, but didn't think anything of it. I was impressed at how observant and bold he was. From that point on, I visited him every day. As I already mentioned, they are very faithful to their territory, so it was very easy to find him. Every time he'd see me or hear my whistles, he'd come out and wait for his peanut. All the other birds that came to me for food I named, so I figured he needed one too. Not very creative, but I named him Whitey. He'd respond when I'd say his name. I don't know for sure if he knew that it was his name or not, or if he was just responding to my voice, but I made sure to only ever address him by Whitey. Whitey. Peanut. Whitey. Good boy. Whitey was awesome. He sang all the time, and he'd get into fights with other male sparrows, too. I spent a lot of time on the rock next to our favorite meeting place that summer. When fall came, I dreaded it because I knew he was going to be migrating soon. One day I never saw him anymore, and I thought this was the end. The next spring came and I was doing my usual walk in the same section of woods, when a sparrow started chasing me as I was walking up the trail. I stopped and he came out onto the ground. I looked in disbelief, but it was unmistakably whitey. 
I knew this because he's the only sparrow I've ever had, and plus it was in the very same section of territory he bred in the previous year. I researched to find how loyal they are to their breeding territory, and it turns out they are extremely faithful, going back to the very spot they did in the previous years. He hadn't forgotten about me. I found that quite impressive. What a memory, I thought. But you know, I think we underestimate wild animals, especially birds. From this experience, I learned that white-throated sparrows have good memories, which makes sense to me, since they do migrate and need to remember landmarks and such. Whitey's trust for me grew much more. He'd bathe with me only a few feet away, and he would even nap with me there. A couple of sparrows learned about me this time, so I gained a couple more friends. Fall came, and this time I wasn't as sad about Whitey going, because I thought for sure I'd see him the next spring, but I was wrong. i never seen Whitey anymore. In fact, 2014, I had no white-throated sparrows. But that would change in late August, when a smart tan morph took notice to me feeding the jays and chickadees, just as Whitey had done. I named it Jack for Jack Sparrow. Jack was very trusting of me and lived much closer to my home than Whitey did. Once fall came, Jack left, but returned to the very same spot the next spring, and this time with a friend, a white morph. This was when I learned that Jack was actually a female, so I changed her name to Jackie, and her new friend I named Joe. Joe was more wary, but caught on quickly to the fact that I was a safe food source. This was the first time I had a pair. It was wonderful. I visited them every day. Interestingly, this was the year that I acquired many more white-throated sparrow buddies with no effort. I think there must have been some whispers going on out there in the wild of a good human who brings lots of goodies. Now I had around a dozen sparrows stretching from the bog two kilometers away to the field behind my home. The next spring, 2016, Jackie did not return. I was so sad about that, but her mate Joe did, and so did all the other ones who remembered me from the year before, and then some. I like to think that Jackie ended up in some other territory because pairs don't mate for life, they only stay together for one breeding season, and naturally the male keeps the territory. So Joe owned the rights to this territory now. Now I had close to 20 sparrows that knew me and came to me for food. I was completely in awe over this. Last year, 2017, all of them returned again, including Joe, and remembered me. I can't walk anywhere out of my little woods without being chased by these sparrows. It's so funny and cute. I love them. Now this year, 2018, most of the sparrows returned and know me except for Joe. Sadly, he didn't return. Joe is the longest I've known a white-throated sparrow, for sure. I haven't put as much attention into the other sparrows, so for all I know, some of them could have known me since 2015, too. It's been incredible knowing these sparrows as I have. Each spring, I look forward to them returning and always wait for the ones that know me to come out and say hello. The most awesome thing is that new sparrows learn from watching their neighbors that I'm a good food source, so I always end up acquiring more white-throated sparrows. As a child, I was completely captivated by the beautiful song these birds sing, but little did I know I'd end up being friends with so many of them. Sometimes I think I was meant to know these birds as I have, and that really goes for all the other birds too. Now as the days get shorter and the evenings cooler, I get ready for these little guys to leave again, and will miss them profoundly. So to my friends from the States who are watching this, when you see those lovely sparrows return, remember to take good care of them for me. Give them lots of healthy food and keep those feeders clean. You never know, one of them may have traveled all the way from the woods I frequent. I found it a little difficult properly writing about my experience with these sparrows, so if things didn't make sense to you, I'm sorry about that. Feel free to ask me any questions to clarify anything. Thanks a lot for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, give the video a like. Happy birding!
Hey guys, me again. In last week's video, Blue Jay Drama Part 3, I mentioned that I'd be doing a poll to help name Feisty Jay's new female. I got so many awesome name suggestions, it was quite difficult trying to narrow them down to just five, but here they are. Up in the right hand corner, you can vote for the name you like. I will run this poll for a week. Thanks so much!